maps and scanners are more complicated than simple types like int, initializing it is a bit trickier than just setting it to some number. Instead, we're going to use the new keyword, which is used in Java, to create a new instance of class. Lastly, we need to tell Java what class we want to create an instance of. This might seem a bit redundant since we've already said that our type is scanner, but it's just the way the syntax in Java works. But wait, what does system in mean? It tells the scanner that we're going to get user input by reading what the user types into the console. Remember that when we print to the, to the console, we write system out instead of system in. Now we know how to get input from the user. Here are some examples. This will get an integer from the user. This will get a double and that will get a string. We need to be careful with scanners. If we ask the user for one type and they give us another, it will create an error and will probably crash your program. For example, that would happen if we asked the user for an integer and they gave us a string. In a later lesson, we'll learn how to prevent the crash. When we're finished with the scanner, make sure to add scannername.close to avoid some problems that happen when you leave it open. Another useful library is called Java Lane Math. It has things like math.pal, which can be used to calculate exponents, or math.max, which returns the larger two numbers. You see all the useful methods in the math library here. Try writing some code that uses scanners and the math library. When we're done, head over to the next lesson to learn about conditionals. Bye, Supercoder!